Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. So today, we're over here at my friend Nano's shop. Hey, how's it going, y'all? We're here looking at a 2008 Saturn View. The vehicle is a no-start. He's already taken a look at it. It's pretty much come to the conclusion that it needs an ECM. He just wanted me to double check it, verify. Now, before we go ahead and get started, I just wanna let you guys know, if you're in the Houston area, you guys need any work done, make sure to hit up Nano. I'll leave the information in the description of the video. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so before we get started, let me show you underneath the hood over here you can see they have the ecm out of its hole they've been doing some checks so i think first things first let's go ahead and move inside the vehicle and let's see if this thing cranks all right guys so we're inside the vehicle i've got the key right here i'm going to go ahead and stick it into the ignition and we're going to turn it on and the first thing we want to look for on the instrument panel is going to be a check engine light so if you look right over here it looks like we do have a check engine light let me focus in on that right over here there's a check engine light now the other thing that we want to look for is going to be some indicator for the security system. We want to make sure that we don't have a problem with the security system. And judging by the lights that are illuminated, I don't see anything that indicates that we might have a problem with the security system. So I'm going to go ahead and crank the engine over. And we're going to see what happens. As you can see, I turned the key. Engine does not crank, nor does it attempt to crank. The only thing that happened was that the lights on the instrument panel dimmed. Let me show you guys that again. I'm going to go ahead and crank the key over and nothing happens. Now, the first thing I want to do is hook up the scan tool, see if we have communication and go from there. All right, guys. So we got the scan tool hooked up. First thing we can look at up here, you'll see the system voltage. It's 12.11 volts. That's what the battery voltage is at the moment. Now that should be sufficient enough to crank the engine over or at least attempt to. So that's a good indication about the battery state of charge. So anyways, we got the scan tool hooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and hit automatic selection. We're gonna go ahead and automatically read the VIN. And as long as this thing is communicating, it should be able to pull up the VIN number. And as you guys can see, it says here VIN reading failed. So let me go ahead and move out of this and I'm gonna try to go into the global OBD2 mode and see if we have any luck over here. It's gonna be this check engine light over here let's do an auto scan this is going to scan the ecm engine control module and as you guys can see we do have somewhat communication here let me go ahead and move over here look at the dtcs now looking at the codes that we have we have a couple of u0100 codes it's going to be lost communication with ecm to pcm so this is definitely an ECM communication problem. I can understand why they believe it has a bad ECM. And again, they've already done their checks, so it's quite possible that it really does need an ECM. They just wanted a second opinion. So I'm gonna go ahead and start at the beginning, pull up a wiring diagram and check our powers and grounds. Well, you know what, before we do that, guys, I think there is one more thing that we could probably do with the scan tool. And that's gonna be try to see if we can communicate with any of the other modules on the vehicle. So like I said, we know we don't have communication with the ECM, but do we have communication with the ABS module or the TCM or the BCM? That's gonna be an important hint that maybe leads us toward a CAN communication issue or something like that. So let's go ahead and hit manual selection. This is a 2009 Saturn View. This is a four cylinder engine. And if we look down here, you'll see that this is manual air conditioning. So let's go ahead and hit manual HVAC. Let's go into diagnosis, control unit. Now we already know that we don't have communication with the ECM but let's check to see if we have communication with maybe the TCM. Let's go in here and check trouble codes, read codes, go to current and history DTCs. And as you can see, we lost communication with the ECM. So we are showing codes. We are able to read the TCM. Let's go back out. Let's check out the body control module. And as you can see here, we have two codes present, one that says battery voltage low, and the other one is a communication code that says lost communications with telematic control module. So we know we're able to communicate with the BCM. Let's try maybe the instrument panel. As you can see, we have a trouble code here. It says device power one circuit low voltage. So we have communication there. Now, the other thing we could probably try to do is just run an auto scan now, because we didn't input the VIN number, it's probably gonna try to scan modules that don't really exist. So you might see some of these come up and then go away because they don't really exist. 
but this is an easy way for us to see what is communicating. And as you can see, it looks like everything but the engine control module is communicating. So at this point, it definitely does not look like we have a problem with the CAN bus communication system network. More than likely, we have a problem with either the ECM or a main power or a main ground to the ECM. So first things first, let's go ahead and pull up a wiring diagram and find our main powers and grounds. All right guys, so I've got the wiring diagram pulled up on the computer and I went ahead and I located the main powers and grounds. There's only a couple of them, so this should be pretty simple. If you look over here on this side, this is gonna be the ECM. And if you look at pins number 19 and 20, let me go ahead and highlight these. Number 19 is going to be a pink wire. And if you look at the description, it says ignition one voltage. So we know whenever it's an ignition one voltage, this means that the voltage is only there with the key on. And then if we look at pin number 20, this is going to be a red and white wire. And if you look at the description, it says battery positive voltage. That's going to be a battery power. That means it's going to have power all the time, even with the ignition off. Let me go ahead and scroll this up. You'll be able to see where these powers come from. So if you look right up here, you'll see that our battery power comes from this fuse here. It's gonna be fuse number 24, 15 amp fuse. That's located in the underhood left fuse box on the left side of engine. And if you look up here, that fuse is gonna be hot at all times. Now, if you look at the ignition voltage feed, you're gonna see it goes through the fuse box, comes out in this pink wire, goes over to this fuse over here, which is the ECM TCM fuse that's located in the IP fuse box. That's the instrument panel fuse box. And as you can see this fuse, is only energized when the ignition is in the on position. Now, as far as our ground, there's only one ground on this computer. It's gonna be on the last page. Let me zoom in here. And if we look over here, you'll see the engine control module. And if you look at this very last pin number 73, that's going to be our ground. And if you look, the ground is located on the engine at the left front top corner. And now the important thing to note here is that this ground is located on the X2 connector. The two powers are located on the X1 connector. So there's two different connectors on this ECM. The two powers are on the X1 connector and the ground is gonna be on the X2 connector. So let's go ahead and move over to the vehicle and do our checks. All right guys, so moving under the hood, the nice thing is that they already have the computer out. And as you can see over here, this is gonna be our X1 connector. This is our X2 connector. And if you look right over here, you see the pink wire right here, that's pin 19. And then the red and white wire is gonna be pin 20. I've got my back probe here. You can see right here, I'm gonna go ahead and back probe the wire. We're gonna start with pin number 20. And the reason we're gonna start with 20 is because the ignition is not on and 20 should be a battery power at all times. So now that we have that back probe in, I've got my power probe connected to the battery. As you can see here, and I'm gonna go ahead and touch the pin. We're gonna see if we have power. And as you can see, we have system voltage there. So that is a good power. Now, while we're at it, we can check this ground. This is gonna be pin number 73 on the X2 connector right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and back probe it. Just like that. And then I'm gonna get my power probe. I'm gonna go ahead and touch it. And as you can see, according to this, we have a good ground. Now let's go ahead and move back to pin 19, which is gonna be the peak wire. This one's a little more difficult to get to. Let me try to slide the pin in. Right there. All right, so we are back probed. Now, of course, we're not gonna have power here and I can show you that with the power probe. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch it. And as you can see, we're just showing the ground, but that's because it's just back tracing through the relay. So let's go ahead and move inside the vehicle and turn the ignition on. All right, guys, so I've got the key. I'm go ahead and put it into the ignition turn the ignition on and let's go double check that pin. All right, so back under the hood, we're on pin 19. I'm gonna go ahead and stick the power probe into the back probe. And as you can see, we have system voltage here. Okay, so what does that tell us? That tells us that we have good powers and grounds to the computer, but this computer is not waking up. So at this point, it definitely looks like it's gonna need an engine control module. Okay guys, so I guess the other thing that we can do while we have this out is a quick visual check. Now I've got both of these connectors disconnected and what we want to look for are any bent pins, any signs of moisture or corrosion. And if you look in here, everything looks okay. Now looking at these connectors, I don't see any corrosion, any signs of moisture on either one of these connectors. 
Now, the other thing that we could probably do as well is a pin fitment test. That could be easy enough. If you look right over here, we have pins 19 and 20, which on the flip side is going to be these two right here. So I'm gonna do a quick uh, pin fitment test. I'm just gonna check them real quick with this back probe. So try to focus in on that. It's gonna kind of feel these out. These are the two right here that we're worried about. So I'm just gonna kind of feel them out. I'm not pushing down. I'm not spreading open the terminals. I'm just trying to feel where the drag on this terminal stops me from pushing this pin in and it actually feels pretty good so i don't see a pin fitment issue here i guess we can also check the ground on pin number 73 over here okay so looking at this x2 connector you can see this is our ground right here i'm just going to take the pin and i mean this feels really wallowed out though that might be normal because there's no drag at all uh, maybe I can compare it to pin number 73 on this connector. Let's see here. There's actually a little bit of drag here. And there's no drag at all on this one. Yeah, this one's wide open. I guess maybe it would be worth a try to uh, try to compress this terminal to make sure that we have a good connection. So let me go ahead and try to do that. Okay guys, so I just tried to crimp down this terminal a little bit using a pick tool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect the computer and see if that made a difference. Okay guys, so I'm inside the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to crank it. And we've got nothing. Let's see if this thing is communicating. Let's go under engine control module, trouble codes, read codes, and tester is not communicating with control unit. So we still have no communication with the ECM. At this point, I don't think there's any way around it. This thing's gonna need an engine control module. All right, guys, so we're back. It's actually a couple days later, and uh, the guy went ahead and ordered a computer. We have a used unit right here, which there's no problem replacing a ECM with the used one, especially on these GM models. We've got the old one right here. So we're gonna go ahead and program this unit. It's already connected. If you look over here, I have my jump pack hooked up. Now. I didn't bring my battery maintainer, but for the GMs, jump pack should be good enough as long as it's fully charged. So it doesn't take too long to program the GM. So the jump pack should be sufficient. Now, if you look over here, I've got my laptop. Let me show you guys what I have attached. So what I'm gonna be using is this uh, little Lenovo laptop that I have, and we are using the uh, MaxiFlash Elite J2534 programming device. So this is gonna be our pass-through device that we are using. Really good unit. I've never had any problems with this thing. I've flashed multiple vehicles with it. So I highly recommend anyone who's looking for a J2534 device, especially if you're on a budget, definitely look at getting this maxi flash unit. Anyways, I have this thing connected to the OBD2 port down at the bottom over here. And as you can see, the ignition is on. So let's go ahead and get started with the reprogramming. All right, guys, so we're here at the laptop. Now, I'm not gonna go through a complete step-by-step -step on how to program the ECM. It's pretty straightforward if you guys follow the instructions, but pretty much to get to this point, you're gonna to need to go to acdelcotds.com. You're going to need to register, make an account, then you're gonna to have to buy a subscription. The subscription I believe is about $40 for one vehicle. So it's really not too expensive. Now, once you buy the subscription, you can follow the directions, go into the SPS programming system, download whatever software they tell you you need to download or whatever plugins need to be downloaded to get into the SPS programming system. And once you do all of that, you should be able to reach this window here. Now, because we are using a J2534 tool, we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And then down here, we're gonna go ahead and click on replace in program ECU. And we're gonna click on next. It's got some directions here. It's gonna tell you to turn the ignition on, make sure the J2534 device is connected, let it finish loading up before you go to the next menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ignition on. Go ahead and move inside. Let's turn the ignition on like that. And we'll move back over to the laptop here. Now we're gonna go ahead and click next. And then it's gonna tell us we need to select the make. This is a Saturn. It's gonna ask for the year. This is a 2009. It's gonna ask for the vehicle type. This is a light duty. And the model is going to be a view. 
Now, once you reach this menu, it's going to ask you to select your J2534 programming device. We are using the Maxi Flash. So we'll select that and then we'll go ahead and hit continue. Now it's saying it's communicating with the device. Okay, now here is where it's really important that if you're using a used engine control module, you have to remember that it's detecting the VIN number from the vehicle that the ECM came out of. So what you guys need to make sure you do is go here, click on this VIN number. You're going to want to delete it and manually input the VIN number for the vehicle that the ECM is going to go into. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And then I'm going to input the VIN number. Okay, so now that we have the VIN number typed in for the vehicle that we want to program this computer for, we're going to go ahead and hit next. Now, when you do this, that is going to lock that VIN number to this particular subscription that you purchased. So once you do this, you've pretty much locked this subscription to this particular vehicle. So now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and click on ECM. And down here at the bottom, we're going to leave it selected to normal. And we're going to go ahead and hit next. We're just going to cycle the ignition off and then back on again. Now we're going to go ahead and click on next. It's communicating with the device. Okay, so now that we're on this screen, you're going to want to make sure that all of our calibration files are checked off and you can pull up and see if there's any updates or anything that needs to be done. Just make sure everything gets checked off and then we'll go ahead and click next. It's going to give you a list here of what's going to be done. Let's go ahead and click next. Now it's going to download and program our software. And as you can see down here, we have an estimated time remaining. It's about 10 minutes. We're just going to let this thing finish up. We're just about finished here. Two seconds, one, zero okay so our programming is done it's giving us some final instructions here just read through them and go ahead and click clear dtcs we are good to go okay so we're going to go ahead and cycle the key off for 30 seconds now we're going to cycle the key on we should be able to start the vehicle up all right guys so as you can see the engine is running nice and smooth now we're just going to go ahead and install our computer, get everything put back together and ship the vehicle. Anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end off the video. Like I always say, I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it informational. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.